If you want to do your spin bike at home, but don't want to spend thousands of dollars on an expensive bike, check this out. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Ron Panda here. Hey, a lot of people are working out at home these days and want to do spin. Pretty popular thing. There are obviously a lot of infomercial spin bikes that are for sale that have a fully integrated system with the workout and the bike and it's all high tech and it will cost you an arm and a leg. And I was thinking, hey, can I duplicate something like that at home on the cheap? And so there are really two pieces to it, the bike as well as the workout program. Now you can subscribe to a lot of workout programs like Les Mills or Swerkin and things like that, but you still need a bike at home and I wanted to find something that was a true spin bike. So I picked up this, it's the D525 spin bike and what you can see here is that this has an actual flywheel on it and it wasn't that expensive it was actually under 400 bucks so i want to find out if this spin bike is worth it whoo just getting everything unboxed out of this styrofoam is kind of a lot of work so we have all the pieces here you can see we have tools and bolts and then here's the bike and while it's actually compact it's much smaller than i kind of expected i can tell you now that the weight is all right here it's all in the front and picking this thing up while it's heavy you know the bike itself is and it just kind of falls forward because this flywheel up here is just so heavy now the first thing we have to do is put on the base here and there are two base bars and the one with the wheels will go in the front and that's to wheel the sucker around and then the back one is this yellow one and that will go right back there and then you are going to use the bolts and just based on the length here and the instructions i think we're going to use these m8s because they're pretty long and then you're going to use on the top end a washer and a bolt so you're going to thread the bolt in through the bottom and then bolt it on the top so you'll have them in there so let's get to it okay the last of the bolts to hold on the feet here and this little tool's nice and handy it's the one tool that you're gonna get and need now we have to put on the pedals and you can see the two pedals here and one is marked left and one is marked right and you're gonna have to guess which side they go on but i'm gonna put the one that's marked right on the right side and it looks like they will just thread in and you're going to actually have to use the tool here to thread them in because the pedal itself will just freewheel. So tighten those in. Okay, pedals are on. So now we got to put in the seat. Now the parts here are apparently numbered 12, but I don't see a sticker on here, but that's going to go right in here with the slot facing back. You might have to unscrew this to allow this to drop in. Okay, then you are going to use this piece and the little handle here, I think, is going to face down. So you're gonna actually have to take this out because that is gonna go through the hole and then hold this in like that. So now that I have that little handle removed, I'm gonna put it in like that. I'm going to take the little knob here. This is going to allow the seat to adjust forward and back so that you can customize it to your size. So pretty cool. And then this little post is where the seat is gonna go. So we'll put the seat on this post just like any bike and you can see there are nuts underneath there so that you can tighten it down so i will do that as well next we put in the handlebars you might have to loosen that up this is the piece that goes in and and these holes are going to go forward so that they can lock in with this little latch right there and then we are going to put the handlebars themselves right on the top so here are the handlebars and the handlebars are going to install on the top with kind of the horns sticking straight out. You're gonna use these short screws to bolt it to the plate underneath that's threaded, but you're also gonna use these little locking washers with it as well. So you're going to uh, kind of start them by hand, I think is the easiest way. And then you get this Allen key here to tighten them down. Once you have that on, then this little cover goes over that to keep it nice and clean. And then this little bracket is already on here, but as you can see, there's a screw that needs to be tightened on the back. But once you tighten this up, position it and tighten it in place, the computer will slide onto this little slot right here. And then you're just gonna plug it in with the wires. Now, before you install this in the bracket, it looks like you're gonna need two AAA batteries. And then you have two three and a half millimeter ports here one that says pulse input and one that says sensor input now the pulse input will be the wires from the handlebars because you have your pulse sensors right up there and then the sensor input will be from the wheel down here so the cord over here she is set up and ready to rock 
You can see the computer set up here. I've got it set up so that I can see my TV. Seems pretty nice. Like I said, you can adjust the seat up and down, forward and back. You can adjust these handlebars up and down, and you can actually put your hands here on the sides. You can put them up here on these heart rate sensors. You can put them all the way up here like you are doing some road biking. So I'm pretty impressed with this thing. I have also put a dampening mat underneath there just to remove any of the impact or shocks. You can see we have little adjustment wheels right there that lift or lower the legs there. So if you're on an uneven surface, you can kind of dial that in. I'm pretty excited about this. You can see that there is a brake right here on this big flywheel and you just use this to tighten it down and get more resistance or loosen it up and get less resistance. So I definitely noticed that when I was putting these on, if you tighten it down, you can't even move these things. And then that will allow you to kind of have variable resistance and kind of get your heart rate up or kind of cool down those types of things. So let's see how it works. So what's really cool is for a few bucks a month, you can subscribe to the Les Mills app or any of these workout apps and they have some spin classes. And now I could just start watching one of these spin classes on my spin bike for a fraction of the cost of some of these higher end all-in-one spin bike systems. Yeah. Woo! Get that burn going. Because after 10 straight hours of rolling on this thing and 200 miles, I am beat. Whew. I tell you what, you actually do get a workout on this. And I will also say for a few hundred bucks, you can get a real spin bike in your home. Not just one of those cheaper exercise bikes, which I've had in the past and they work pretty well. But to really dial in the resistance like you can on a spin bike is great for giving you the workout that you really need. So if you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on the big name integrated exercise bike systems, pick this up, subscribe to an app like Les Mills or any of these other ones and save yourself a ton of money and give yourself an experience and the workout. I will put a link to this awesome little spin bike in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out.